Hello my friends, and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In this video, we will explore the manufacturing process of essential tools in mechanical engineering. Matco Tools is a company that produces high-quality hand tools, including ratchets. The manufacturing process of Matco Tools ratchets begins with spin welding, which is a technique that fuses two pieces of metal together by spinning them at high speed. This process ensures strength and durability in the ratchet. The next step is heat treatment, where the ratchet is heated to 1200 degrees Celsius using an induction coil. This process helps to improve the strength of the metal and to reduce its brittleness. Grinding is an important step in the manufacturing process of Matco Tools ratchets, and it is typically used to achieve precise dimensions, smooth finishes, and close tolerances on the ratchet parts. After heat treatment, the ratchet goes through a series of ceramic stones that prep it for plating. Plating is the process of applying a thin layer of metal coating to the surface of the ratchet to protect it from corrosion. Matco Tools uses hexavalent chromium coating for its ratchets, which is a highly durable and corrosion-resistant coating. Once the plating is complete, the ratchet goes through machining, where it is cut and shaped into its final form. This process involves the use of precision machinery to ensure the ratchet meets the required specifications. Finally, the ratchet is assembled by hand, with each component carefully fitted together to create the finished product. This assembly process involves inserting the pawl, the gear, and the drive into the ratchet body, followed by the handle and the release button. A Morse taper shank twist drill bit is a complex tool that requires a precise and intricate manufacturing process. Here are the steps involved in the production of a drill bit with a Morse taper shank, rolling forged machine. The first step in the production process is the creation of a blank or a rough cylindrical piece of metal that will form the body of the drill bit. This is done through a rolling forged machine that applies high pressure and temperature to the metal, resulting in a dense and strong blank. Cutting tips. Once the blank has been formed, the next step is to cut the tips of the drill bit. This is done using specialized cutting tools that shape the tips into the required angle and shape. Grinding tips. After the tips have been cut, they are ground to their final shape and size. The grinding process is critical, as it ensures that the tips are sharp and can penetrate the material being drilled efficiently. Straightening. To ensure that the drill bit is perfectly straight, it is passed through a straightening machine that uses rollers to remove any bends or curves in the metal. Lathe turning. The body of the drill bit is then shaped and turned on a lathe machine. This process creates the flute or the spiral groove that runs along the length of the bit, which helps remove debris and chips from the hole being drilled. Milling tang. The tang or the flattened section of the Morse taper shank is created using a milling machine. This tang fits into the chuck of a drill press or lathe and ensures that the drill bit stays in place during use. Snagging. Once the tang has been milled, the drill bit is passed through a snagging machine that removes any rough edges or burrs that may have formed during the manufacturing process.
polishing. To give the drill bit a smooth and shiny finish, it is polished using a buffing machine that removes any remaining imperfections. Heat treatment. The drill bit is then heat treated to increase its hardness and durability. This involves heating the bit to a specific temperature and then quenching it in a cooling medium such as oil or water. Accurate cylindrical grinding. After heat treatment, the shank and edge of the bit are ground to their final size and shape using a cylindrical grinding machine. Grinding point. The final step in the manufacturing process involves grinding the point of the drill bit. This is done using a specialized grinding machine that ensures the point is sharp and accurately shaped. Rolling mark. Finally, the drill bit is stamped with a rolling mark that identifies the manufacturer and the size of the bit. Nitriding. In some cases, the drill bit may also undergo nitriding, a process that increases its surface hardness and wear resistance. the spanner's manufacturing process at best one tools company. Forging, the process of shaping metal into a desired form using compressive force. Trimming, after forging, the spanners are trimmed to remove excess metal and to achieve the desired shape and size. Punching, holes are punched in the spanners to create the openings for the wrench. Broaching. This is a process of cutting or shaping a material using a broaching machine. In spanners manufacturing, this step is used to create the teeth or serrations on the wrench. Profile grinding. In this step, the spanners are ground to achieve the desired shape and surface finish. Shank grinding. The shank of the spanner is ground to achieve the desired dimensions. Heat treatment. The spanners are subjected to a heat treatment process to increase their hardness and toughness. Vibrator process. This is a process in which the spanners are tumbled in a vibratory machine to remove any burrs or sharp edges. Electroplating process. The spanners are coated with a layer of metal using an electroplating process. This enhances the appearance of the spanners and provides protection against corrosion. Inspection. Finally, the spanners are inspected to ensure that they meet the required quality standards. Laser cutting metal plate. The first step in the manufacturing process involves laser cutting a metal plate into a specific shape and size. Once the metal plate has been cut, it is stamped to create the shape of the circular saw blade. The metal plate is then subjected to heat treatment, which involves hardening the metal to improve its strength and durability. Coarse plate polishing. Once the heat treatment process is complete, the metal plate is polished to remove any rough spots or burrs. Grinding teeth base. Next, the base of the circular saw blade teeth is ground to create a smooth, even surface. Plate inspect. The metal plate is inspected for any defects or imperfections that could affect the performance of the circular saw blade. Soldering carbide teeth. The carbide teeth are then soldered onto the base of the circular saw blade using a high temperature soldering process. Sandblast. 
the circular saw blade is sandblasted to remove any remaining burrs or rough spots. Half ground blade, the circular saw blade is partially ground to create a rough edge. Cleaning, the circular saw blade is thoroughly cleaned to remove any debris or dust. Stress line, the circular saw blade is subjected to a stress line process, which helps to ensure that the blade is evenly balanced, precise adjust, any necessary adjustments are made to the circular saw blade to ensure that it is perfectly balanced. Evenness inspection. The circular saw blade is inspected to ensure that it is perfectly even and balanced. Grinding teeth back rake. The back of the circular saw blade teeth is ground to create the proper rake angle. Rake angle examined. The rake angle is examined to ensure that it is within the specified range. Teeth side rake examined. The side rake of the circular saw blade teeth is examined to ensure that it is within the specified range. Accurate grinding. The circular saw blade teeth are accurately ground to create a sharp cutting edge. cutting test. Finally, the circular saw blade is tested to ensure that it can cut through various materials with ease. In mechanics or engineering, sockets are tools used for tightening or loosening nuts and bolts. Large sockets generally refer to sockets with a larger diameter that are designed for use with larger fasteners. These types of sockets are typically used in applications where higher torque is required, such as in automotive or heavy machinery repairs. Large socket tools may come in various shapes and sizes, but some common types include. Impact sockets. These are designed to be used with impact wrenches or air tools, which can deliver high levels of torque. They are usually made of hardened steel and have thicker walls to withstand the stress of impact forces. Deep sockets. These have a longer reach than regular sockets and are used to tighten or loosen bolts in hard-to-reach areas, such as recessed bolts. Spark plug sockets. These are designed specifically for removing and installing spark plugs in engines. They have a rubber lining to grip the spark plug and prevent damage. Hex sockets. These are designed to fit hexagonal nuts and bolts and are commonly used in construction or assembly work. Torque sockets. These are calibrated to a specific torque value and are used in applications where precise torque settings are required, such as in engine assembly or other critical fastening applications. The Baco adjustable wrench manufacturing process begins with the selection of high-quality alloy steel cutting. The raw material is then cut into the desired lengths and shapes, forging and hot trimming. The cut pieces are then heated to 1150 degrees Celsius and forged into the rough shape of the wrench. Hot trimming is also done at this stage to remove excess material and shape the wrench more accurately. Shot blasting. The wrench is then cleaned and prepared for further processing by shot blasting, which involves blasting the surface with tiny metal particles to remove any residual rust or dirt. Punching and coining. The wrench is then punched and coined to create the specific shape and size of the jaws and the other functional parts of the tool. Polishing. The wrench is polished to remove any surface imperfections and give it a smooth finish. Machining. The wrench is machined to create precise tolerances and ensure that all the parts fit together correctly. Hardening and tempering, induction heating to 860 degrees Celsius. The wrench is then subjected to a heat treatment process called hardening and tempering, where it is heated to a high temperature of 860 degrees Celsius and then rapidly cooled to harden the metal. Surface treatment chrome plating phosphating. The wrench is then coated with a surface treatment such as chrome plating or phosphating to protect it from corrosion and wear.
assembling. The various parts of the wrench are then assembled together, including the jaws, handle, and adjustment mechanism. Periphery grinding jaw side smooth surface. The jaws of the wrench are then ground to create a smooth surface that will grip the nuts and bolts more effectively. Once the manufacturing process is complete, the adjustable wrench is inspected to ensure that it meets all the required specifications and quality standards. CNC, Computer Numerical Control Automation, refers to the use of computer technology to control machines that produce complex parts and products. The use of CNC automation has revolutionized manufacturing by making it possible to produce high-quality parts with exceptional precision and speed. In this part, we will focus on four specific aspects of CNC automation. Automatic bar feeder, twin spindle, dual turret, and live tooling. An automatic bar feeder is a device that allows for the automated loading of raw material, such as metal bars, into a CNC machine. This device is commonly used in CNC lathes and turning centers to keep the machine running for extended periods without human intervention. Automatic bar feeders can be customized to accommodate a wide range of materials and diameters, allowing for increased flexibility and productivity. Twin spindle refers to a CNC machine that has two spindles for cutting and shaping materials. This type of machine allows for simultaneous machining of two parts, which can significantly reduce cycle times and increase overall production efficiency. Twin spindle machines are commonly used in the automotive, aerospace, and medical device industries. Dual turret machines have two tool turrets that can be used to hold a variety of cutting tools. This allows for increased flexibility and reduces the need for tool changes during machining, resulting in faster cycle times and improved part quality. Dual turret machines are commonly used in the production of complex parts with multiple machining operations. Live tooling is a feature found on some CNC machines that allows for the use of rotating cutting tools. This feature enables the machine to perform milling, drilling and tapping operations while the part is still being held by the spindle. Live tooling is commonly used in CNC lathes and turning centers, allowing for increased machining capabilities and improved part quality. The BTD-110HR-16 horizontal boring machine is a high-precision and efficient machine that is designed for boring large and heavy workpieces. It is widely used in the manufacturing industry for machining large components such as engine blocks, gearboxes, and turbines. This machine is equipped with a powerful spindle that is capable of handling heavy cutting loads. The spindle is mounted horizontally and it rotates at a high speed to bore holes into the workpiece. 
The spindle is also equipped with a variety of cutting tools such as drills, reamers, and boring bars that can be changed quickly to suit the specific machining requirements of the workpiece. The horizontal boring machine also features a robust work table that can support heavy work pieces. The table can be adjusted in different directions to achieve the desired machining angle in depth. Additionally, the machine is equipped with advanced control systems that allow for precise and accurate machining. One of the key advantages of the machine is its high level of automation. The machine is equipped with a range of sensors and monitoring systems that enable it to adjust its machining parameters automatically. This ensures consistent and accurate machining results, even when working on complex components. Furthermore, the machine is designed for easy operation and maintenance. The machine is equipped with a user-friendly interface that allows operators to easily program and control the machining process. The machine is also designed for easy access to the cutting tools and workpiece, which makes maintenance and cleaning a straightforward task.